Hello and welcome back to the Weird and Proud Podcast. It's Sam and James. Were you going to jump in there, James? No, jump you in. came in really hard there. Like, oh, that's... okay. Well, I was going to say, some people did like when we did some harmonies. Like, don't be I afraid. I should probably throw back in. Yeah, yeah don't be scared. Beforehand. Don't be scared. I was, I was reading more science-y stuff, so I was distracted so when you started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, also, if you are watching on YouTube, we both have our glasses on. Just a couple of nerds. Glasses day. It's glasses day. I know. I have actually gotten so many compliments on these glasses, by the way. I've told you many times I love your glasses. Um, you never really do. Yeah, I literally never wear them. I always wear my contacts, but I forgot to order them. Um, and they were old, so I was like, I'm just going to put my glasses on. And, yeah, I'm feeling, like, fired up from all of the comments about him. Um, the only thing I hate about wearing glasses, and I was telling you this, that, like, it hurts my head. Like, it kind of gives me a headache. And I just, like, I know you said you don't get that. I think part of it, I didn't bring this up. I think it's because you never wear them. Yeah. I'm like, just not used to it. My little brain. It takes time for. Your brain's so big. It to, and your brain's huge. Yeah, it's just so big. It's it so takes big. time for the glasses got to expand and go get them adjusted a little bit. You yeah. Know? I don't even know. I think it's just, again, like I just have a big brain. I also just like, you know, I have like, I'm like enough on the spectrum that I just don't like, like when things are touching me. True. You know, like I hate, like that's why I always have my hair up. That's why, like, I just, like, don't really like wearing, like, a lot of jewelry. I just, I, I mean, I would go naked if I could. I just, like, don't like when things are touching me. So, anyway, so that's my cross to bear in this life is trying to figure it out. But I do, I do like the look of glasses. They're just annoying. Glasses and, are your cross to bear. Yeah. And also, like, working out. Like, how do people work out in glasses? You know, that's the other thing, too. It's like, how are you supposed to exercise? There's certain things I absolutely won't do. Yeah, like, with glasses on. Like, today I worked out in glasses, but it was, like, a simple like, just they're always lifting. fogging up. Like, I'm just, I sweat too much. I sweat too much. Anyways, that's my little rant for today. Hope everyone's having a great week so far. Happiest, or is it in the last week of July? No. But almost last week of July. Happy Monday. Happy Monday or whatever day you're listening to this. Um, hope you're hanging in there. Hope you're staying cool. Um, and James and I also, before we also dive into stuff, we did see Twisters this weekend. Absolutely. Not really a weird a... watch per no. se. But I have heard some people are saying they don't like it. They didn't like it. What were the reasons? They said they didn't like the acting and it was, you know, like a lot of people have a lot of issues with sequels. Acting was better in the first one. Of course. Yeah. But it's just all like kind of cheesy. And first corny. one was cheesy. Yeah. But this one, it was cheesy. But I thought it was cheesy in the right ways. I don't know. I thought it was really good. I thought it was good. I thought it was a good I movie. I thought it's worth going to say, especially in the theaters. It's the summer of sequels. And even that. I even read something else that somebody I saw something was like 2025 is going to be the best summer of movies ever. And it's all sequels. Yeah. I like know. nobody's come coming out with original ori- stuff. Yeah. And yeah. that's partly our own fault. We don't go and see original movies. Everybody just wants repurposed stuff over yeah. and over and over again. Yeah. Because it's comforting. Nostalgia. I remember. Yeah, of course. But then don't complain about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. just no, what I'm I saying. know. I know. But it, I thought it was really good. I thought it was worth it. Um, and I thought it was really cute. There's cute. It's sound. The effects. I thought they were effects great. were good. Facts. The effects. The facts. The facts. I like the homages to the first one. The um, they were much more subtle than what a lot yep. of like. Yeah. Uh, what, similar what other, plot to yeah. the first one but i oh thought God, it was really good spot on similar like yeah. so many of the same yeah. stops Very during similar. the movie so many of the same yeah. things happening over and over again they really didn't do a whole lot with that yeah which i loved yeah yeah but anyways that's worth the watch in my opinion but you know don't get mad at me if it, if it was worth going to see in a theater too yeah because yeah, it's, yeah. a, it's a big action movie right definitely so you get definitely. to see everything at once um, anyways, also before we dive in, reminder that shows coming up, the closest one's coming up August 2nd will be in Southampton, New York in the Hampton. So rich, so lavish. Come have a martini with Come us. Come have a martini. And then we're going back to our tents. I don't know. I can't remember if we talked about this on here, but literally the only place in the Hamptons to rent a spot to stay over for the night 
it was like tenting out. We're gonna camp at the Hamptons. So we're tenting. camping in the Hampton <laughs> with the other with the other pores. Hampton camping. Hampton camping. I'm trying to come. Up so with that'll be the fun. Right way to say that'll that. be really humbling. So and but then it's we also- not camping. No, it's literally. Well, like they're they have tents gorgeous. set up. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't it's, say gorgeous, but like they're nice. There's going to be wood floors. Yeah, it is not a tent on the ground. Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but there's wood floors. There's a frame. They stretch some. It's not even a tent. It's like canvas. So it's right. very. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like canvas. It's probably air conditioned. Yeah. Well, I don't know about air conditioned, but I hope it's we can pray. <laughs> we can I'm okay. Pray. I'm. I, yeah, as much as I love to rough it, I'll take air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's coming up. And then also on August 7th, it's a Wednesday, we'll be at Pottstown, Pennsylvania. There is this big club called Soul Joe's. So if you're in the area, come out. It's I know it's a Wednesday night, but we'll make it worth your while. It's kind of that's like a an hour venue. from you. I like that. Venue. Yeah, it's really fun. So Get your tickets, SamanthaRamsell.com slash events. We'll see you out there. And more dates coming soon this fall. Where I have a couple more I'm waiting on. Then I'll do a big announcement. So Woot, woot. Woot, woot. Remember we used to say that all the time? Woot, woot. Did you ever say that? Woot, woot. I think woot, I still woot. text it sometimes. Yeah, that's literally so like old of you. Chooky, as yeah, the kids I don't say. care. What does okay. that mean? What does chooky What does mean? woot, woot mean? What does chooky mean? It means old. That's like an old Sounds thing. stupid. <laughs> um, anyways. Okay. Well, you guys, quite the episode. Okay. So we are going to start to dig into Appalachian Trail. Madness, oh, yeah. Supernaturalness. Okay. And listen, w- there could probably be an entire podcast just on Appalachian Trail. Stuff. I think that there are some people that have like. I'm sure there YouTube. are. There's. Yeah, there's. There definitely. There's got Especially be. the like hiking part of it because it's a very reasonable like hike adventure where well, if you love camping and carrying everything you need yeah on your no back, a lot of people that's like they're very popular they're like bucket list yeah. goals to hike the Appalachian Trail even parts of it I mean not even doing the whole thing but it's one of those things that like you're less likely to die than Everest like if you well, do Everest right. to the summit yeah, yeah like yeah. it's a lot it's a reasonable thing yeah it's just, just a very long yeah, yeah yeah it's just a huge area um so we're gonna delve in a little bit to what is going on in appalachia in the appalachian mountains let's find, how is that pronounced i know appalachia appalachian 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 i've mountains. heard it multiple ways yeah we should have asked when we were in west virginia i know i know um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about the folklore, some stories, um, some of the like real true crimes that have happened. Well, quote unquote crimes. Um, and then James is going to get into like why this area, right? Is oh, yeah. you're gonna, absolutely. Why this area is so spooky. Oh, no. How it got formed or, mostly. Oh, oh we're going okay. real geological nerd on this. Oh, one. OK. I can okay. talk about why it's spooky, too. Yeah, I mean, more not like why it's spooky, but more just like the history of, you know, why it is, why there's so much diversity there, why it's... We can do that. You can do... James, you can do it. And I can fill in some of the... Because I did do a little bit of research on that. Um, and then, of course, we have some great secrets. We're adding in more secrets. Let me know what you guys think. So the episodes are going to be a little tad longer. Um, but I'm curious if you guys like this you know, layout if we just add them on at the end. And I was thinking too, one way that might be easier too, is if I know the topic for next week, I could say it on here and be like, Hey, like, you know, it would have been nice if last week I was like, Hey, if anyone has any stories about the Appalachian mountains, I like follow-ups though. Now I I want people calling them a secrets about the Appalachian yeah, mountains. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, that's what, you know, it would be nice to have one of them for today versus next week. I don't know. Anyways, Test things are, out. things are being tested. And just let us know what you guys think. If you like, you know, not huge changes, but, you know, we love we love the constructive criticisms. Um, All right. With that being said, James, let's get started. Let's talk about the Appalachian Appalachian Mountains and some of the folklore around it. And 
I know you're going to talk a little bit more about the history of the Appalachian Mountains. You go and through why. as much as you want. I'll, okay. I'm sure I'll have a little colored commentary to throw in there. So Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, you can just, you know, butt in whenever you need to. But, you know, the Appalachian Mountains, right? So, obviously, this is a huge area. This technically goes almost, it, it technically is, up to, from Canada down to Alabama. So, it's basically like the entire East Coast. How many states does it cover? <gasps> Ooh, 13? 14. No, 14. Good, good, that was good close, guess. though. That was really good. I'm impressed. Um, so, this is a huge area. So, you know, we're kind of talking generalities when I talk about some of these. Like, because, again, there's obviously different stories up in Maine, Canada, versus what you'd hear in, like, Tennessee. But the idea of the history behind Appalachian Mountains is this is, and I know you'll talk about this, but the oldest mountain chain in the world. The oldest mountains in the world. Would you agree with that? No. <gasps> what? What do you mean? I would disagree with that. Really? Yeah, there's an older range in Africa. Oh, uh, well, okay. One of the oldest. Absolutely one of one the of oldest. One of the oldest. And it's been before since before Pangea. Perhaps. And I'm looking to James for just confirmation. But that was <laughs> from what I learned. Yep. It was before Pangea. So again, these this is why the diversity of these mountains too is so big because it did cover such a huge geological area. Yeah. Massive. Yeah. So of course. The mount, so of course, the mountains have been there forever, and even before you know the United States of America was a thing, before Britain even came over here, of course, there were a lot of Native Americans that were living in this area. And one of the bases that I talk about of the folklore is a lot of these not a lot, but some of these stories came from Native American culture. And one of the things that they talk about was, um like that started a lot of these stories because you'll hear like if you even look up Appalachian Mountains, I mean, there are so many stories and folklore and, you know, like old wives tales about this area of I mean, like there's I mean, 15 to 20 different types of stories that you could hear, whether it's Bigfoot stories or certain beasts in the woods. There's, you know, ghosts, there's werewolves, there's spirits, there's, they're called like cyproids. Cy there's just like, like things that can change that are like shapeshifters, basically. They're shapeshifters. Dang. So there are so many different stories and folklore around this area, but a lot of it they believe started um, a lot of these rumors and stories in Canada, like in the in the mountains and like the nor most northern part of the Appalachian Trail. And they there was this tribe called the Naha, and they were apparently like a very violent tribe, and they're always like getting in fights with the other tribes and. They apparently were always like stealing other tribes things and just causing issues. And there was this about to be like this war. And this is about like in 1300 when this this war was happening between a lot of these tribes. And they apparently were like pissing off again all the other tribes around them. And at one point, all the other tribes were going to go up there and like basically fight them or like tell them to leave. And they get up there and the entire tribe is gone. And all of their stuff, it was like they almost just up and vanished. All of their, all of the fires were still going. A lot of their stuff was there. Like it just looked like they literally left in the middle of the night. And there started being these rumors about whether they were pushed out by something hiding in the mountains or did they, have they now become these quote unquote feral people that live in the woods that are haunting everyone? And just because apparently, like, you know, these were back when we didn't really look like we did back in 1300, you know, like they believe there's all these kind of rumors that there's a certain group of people, probably Native Americans that went into the mountains, went into the caves, and they all kind of inbred with each other. And they still look very much like someone would look back in the 1300s because they never really evolved. Um and you see this a lot in pop culture, especially now, too. Like, if you guys ever saw the movie Descendants, did you ever see that movie? No. <gasps> oh, my God. So scary. If you've never seen it, so good. I don't even know if I'd want to rewatch it because it is all of my nightmares because these girls go 
into the caves in the Appalachian Mountains. I think it's like in the Smoky Mountains. And they're exploring caves. Again, my worst nightmare. And they find these people living in these caves that, of course, spoiler alert, Got it. murder them. So also wrong turn. Did you ever see wrong turn? That one sounds more familiar. That was another like group of movies that um, like, semi recent have eyes. Exact same idea. Stuff like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 But the wrong term was also based in the Appalachian Mountains. And, you know, again, this idea that they're this group of people that, you know, were kind of uncivilized and hidden in the day and come out at night. And this also gets a lot of mixed up too. I wanted to pause right here and just say there's obviously a lot of like negative stereotypes that come out of this area, you know, just because from pop culture, from, you know, people, you know, being called hillbillies. And I mean, a lot of it is just this area has seen so much turmoil and, you know, between getting screwed over, they went down there for mining and, you know, exploring yep. these caves and that got shut off. And then they got hit with um, the epidemic of pain, painkillers and yeah opioids so you know it's uh, just because these people love to live in the you know live a little off the grid and are living in big cities they get this negative stereotype and so it's not you know I, again i don't want people to think like we're talking about you know these quote-unquote people that live in west virginia day to day like you know how we are right now this is these are this is like supposedly pre even america you know that these <clears throat> excuse me these these wild people quote unquote come from so and you'll hear this these are also called they call them like the white feral people the feral people um you'll hear a lot about this and especially he's gone viral on tiktok about people talking about like the white feral people and it's not even like white isn't like skin color it's like they are like actually white like they look white, they are super tall, they apparently have golden eyes, and again, they look more Neanderthal, like an older version of a human. Is it because they live in caves? Like they just and don't that's have the skin idea. pigmentation? Right. And that's the idea, right? Because they don't ever see sunlight, they're in caves all day, they come out at night. So, so there's this whole, uh, all of these stories that come from the feral white people. And again, you know, so it kind of started with this Native American lore about where did this tribe go? And it's just been passed down generation through generation. And now it ha even today, if you go to Appalachian Trail, you'll hear about the white feral people. And just so you guys have an idea, they, they on average believe six to eight people every year go missing from the Appalachian Trail. Since the trail was, like, I mean, not built, but what would she even say? Since it, like, was maintained and called a trail, was in 1923. So it's been technically open as a trail, as a public hiking trail since 1923. And since then, 168 people have died in one way, shape, or form on the Appalachian Trail or That's from the Appalachian Trail. Which, yeah, it's not horrible. And obviously, a lot of these are due to can be due to like they had um you know effects from weather obviously you know if people are hiking in snow people die from hypothermia from of course animal attacks or there are even like some diseases and bacteria infections that they can get if they drink the wrong water it's usually eating. people that are underprepared to go into that type of environment right that's what right. it is, is but also there are to a lot of people that have taken their own lives yeah and which also brings up some controversy if some people are like no did they really take their own life or was it and even though i say 168 people since 1923 isn't a lot that would still be horrible if you know someone <gasps> of like course that. of Just course throwing that out there. but yeah 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 um so so they're of course there are just like so many stories i mean again like we could do an entire podcast on just stories that come from that place trail people who are missing or someone who passed away um but just to kind of dive in specifically i was looking at this video online of this guy who was a united states ranger park ranger okay and he was a park ranger in smoky mountains for 20 years 
And he was doing this video um, and telling about all of the different rules and some of the stories that have come from these rules that they always go over with new park rangers. Or if you're on the trail, you'll probably hear from other people talking about these stories. Interesting. Okay. So, and this is something too, that's also been really viral on TikTok. Like I've heard a lot of these on TikTok of, like folklore and things that people in the Appalachian mountains do. And I really am curious again, I'm really hoping that someone out there is from this area or has been there and can tell me, Oh, we've got to at least have a few people that have like hiked a significant amount of it. Totally. Have you done even like, a long weekend hike, like yeah. a three day hike. Yeah. I'd love to hear because somebody that tried to do like the whole thing or someone who's done some research. Yeah. Who well, there's part that? of the Appalachian Trail in Connecticut, you know? Oh, absolutely. So we could go. We've, We've been on it before. Yeah. I was just going to say, I was like, I think we have. But before, I mean, people but... that like, I'm talking about. Yeah. Doing the whole thing. Camping. Not like one day type. Yep. Day just hike. go for it. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So um, one of the biggest rules in living in Appalachia is you always keep your curtains closed at night. Okay. Interesting. So there was a story, this guy named Dan Williams, who he was a park ranger and he just didn't show up for work one day. Um, they waited all day. He never showed up. He wasn't answering his phone. So they showed up and he was in his bed, eyes open, mouth open, just like paralyzed in fear. And just like wouldn't snap out of it. He was alive, but like would not snap out of it. And after like he went to the hospital and he was obviously like working with psychologists because he just he like wouldn't talk like he wouldn't talk. He was like paralyzed like from like in he was just like like they were saying he was frozen. It was like he was frozen in that time. And he had said eventually that he saw a pair of yellow eyes outside his window. And he, as soon as he made eye contact with him, with the yellow eyes, he said that he like blacked out. He doesn't remember anything. He just remembers being taken over by darkness. And he like, like basically took him like weeks to like get out of it. Wow. And again, there's always like this rumor about these yellow eyes or red eyes that you see these yellow or red eyes um, outside your window or you'll see them outside. Um, So that's one of the rules and one of the did they say where these again, you probably already said this, but these rules just come from. People, people park who rangers, worked people as park rangers, people that have been out there, yeah. they've just kind of developed over time. Yeah. Did, they don't talk about, like, the origin of that specific rule? No, like, what's other the than, reason? no, okay, other just than wondered. just came from, like, you know, it's just been passed down that, again, if you make contact, if you make eye contact with the eyes that are looking at you, if you stare into them, it allows, you know, they always talk about, like, you know, you can't allow, like, the dark energy to come in. <clears throat> you can't allow the dark energy to come in. So, That's one of the rules. So, and everyone, like, again, if you see a lot of these TikToks are always like, you keep your curtains closed at night. That's like one of the things that's gone viral and people always talk about. Okay. And this is the other thing that people always talk about is if you hear your name, no, you didn't. So they say, if you hear your name, and this is obviously most of this is at night, but even if you're in the woods too by yourself, if you hear your name or if you hear like someone crying out or you hear someone that sounds like someone, you know, but there's no way that person is in the woods yeah. or with you. Don't go near it and get away as far as possible. You you run into your old high school friend that was on your hockey team on the Appalachian Trail for no reason. Yeah, right. Doesn't like, happen. Not, right. So if so, that's always, you know, like there was one video that was going viral that was someone who lived in Appalachia and they're like the biggest rule of Appalachia. Keep your curtains closed. And if you hear your name, no, you didn't. At night. So does that mean to just not react to it? Yeah. Yes. Ignore Again, it. you're letting that energy. You're letting that energy in. in. Okay. Yeah. I it's trying to be invited in. So that is another rule. Um, another rule, too, is don't whistle outside at night. Don't attract things to you. There was a guy who had told a story that he had a dog and they were outside and he had whistled to the dog. And... Normally the dog would come right back to him and the dog ended up taking like 
15, 20 minutes to get to him. He's like, what the hell? And the dog was like scared and whimpering and was acting so weird for like the next two days and wouldn't go in the woods. Wow. Yeah. So don't whistle into the woods. Um, They're also apparently, this is another creature that people say, people say, people see, called a campus cat. Apparently has six legs. It's twice as large as a lion. And again, it also has golden eyes. And they say, if you see anything like a huge cat, don't make eye contact and don't try to run away. Just ignore it. Because apparently it's like this supernatural creature in the woods. Where did its name come from? I don't don't know. know. I don't know. Sorry. No, I'm just asking. Yeah. No, no, no. Feel free. Um, But no, they they don't know where that comes from. That was also just a folklore that's been passed down. Um, Another thing is don't trust everything you see. So if you see something that, you know, you're walking in the woods and you see something that's just totally out of place, don't go towards it. And the reason is there was this man, his name was Adam and he was hiking alone in the Appalachian trail. And he saw this huge mansion. He said in the woods He's like, whoa, that's a huge mansion to be in the middle of nowhere. And he says he goes in. So, he, go, you know, he's like, I got to go check this out. So he goes into the house. And apparently there was some like a cup of mushroom soup, what he says it looks like. And he drank it. Don't know why. He says he felt like he was kind of like hypnotized to go in there. And then the next thing he knew after he drank this mushroom tea, he woke up on the forest floor and Ever since then, he's been looking for the mansion again. So then he was like, they found him because he's like, I'm trying to look for this mansion. I'm trying to look for this mansion. They're like, there's no mansion out here. And he's like, yeah, there is. I found, like, I saw it. And they're like, there's no way. And apparently, like, he ended up, like, going insane and was, like, institutionalized. Because he, like, lost his mind from not being able to find it. So, and that's, there's apparently, like, another thing, too, where people will see, like, like a speaker in the woods and that puts out like a siren noise, which is another rule that if you see or hear a siren, don't go towards it. There's no tornado sirens in that area okay. in the woods. And this somehow supernatural energy will show up as like a speaker with this siren. And if you go towards it, it'll take you in, take you There's in. very much a theme of, the entities or whatever is in Appalachia knows how to use you against yes. you. Yes. It's like it's using your own And it's psychology. waiting for you to invite it in, yeah. in a way or yeah, shape yeah, or yeah, form. Yeah. Either be interested in it or go towards it or, yeah, respond like to it. Similar folklore from other regions, shall we call it. Uh, like, think about dracula right you have to be invited in by vampires have to be invited in a lot of these folklores end up having similar these similar theories Same with the skinwalkers like they always talk about the resemblance too between this and the skinwalkers which are a lot in but again in this one less than people getting attacked it's that it's people's mental capacity that is what they end up losing right right there's not like i was attacked by a monster i didn't get bit by something it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I someone was driven insane because of some of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of them are driven insane, or a lot of people just disappear and they just don't find them. So um there's also this story about uh seeing if you see a woman in her sixties wearing silver eyeglasses and a hat on the trail. She'll ask you for help back to the trail. She'll say she's lost. If you help her back, you'll have good luck. They say you'll be blessed with good luck. Some say seven years up to 10 years, depending on the story. Okay, so there's some positives here. So, and they say she's a benevolent spirit, and it was based off a woman named Georgia. And this woman had gotten lost. She was trying to hike 60s by herself. She's trying to hike the Appalachia Trail. And she got lost and was never found. Yeah. And so now there's a story about this woman. If you, you know, so if you do help her. So, yeah. So kind of spooky. There's also, speaking of similar stories, an old man, apparently with a long beard and a walking stick, who you'll see on the Appalachian Trail. And apparently he likes to come at night, especially if you're in a group. 
and he'll come sit with you or he'll come over and just, you know, start chatting with you and he'll want to tell you a story. And in the folklore is you don't interrupt him. If you interrupt him, someone will disappear from your group in the middle of the night and never come back. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also another one that's, this is, I feel like you hear a lot about this in a lot of different places too, but how the woods should never be silent. So if you're in the woods and it's all of a sudden dead silent and you can't hear anything but your own feet, you should start singing, start making noise, start talking. I thought you were supposed to whistle. Don't whistle, sing. Okay. (laughs) But... Yeah, I don't know. But the idea, or just like try and get to an area where you can hear birds, try and listen for. Yeah, it's true. I mean, if you're, you never hear the background sound in the woods, but if you hear nothing, like no animals, nothing, there's the animals yeah. know something's yeah, in something's, the area that yeah, shouldn't not be. Good. Right. And you shouldn't be there either. Yeah. 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 So, um, oh, and then the last one, too, one of the last ones is. You know, if you ever see another campsite that looks like it's been abandoned or even, you know, just looks like there's no people there, never go in it, never go take something from it or go in that area. Because apparently that's also like, you know, kind of like a setup. Like, I don't know if it's like this idea too. they always say like these white feral people are watching you. You know, whenever you're in there, you're always being watched. So just know you know a lot of these times they're trying to set you up to see if you either invite them or kind of play into their game yeah and then they'll take you in the middle of the night i just love that they're called the white feral people because that just feels like a target on a sunday morning at 9 a.m white feral people i i think that i think it's interesting just all of the different stories and the 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 rules and the themes that come with these right like how similar ish they might be but i mean it's good warning it's a lot of good idea for survival in the woods in general if totally. you see another campsite don't go bugging <gasps> right right yeah and you know again all of these are stories that have been passed down and you know even there's a lot of stories too again of people who just gone missing like there was um a lot of kids that had gone missing like more in like the 70s and the 80s and that just like weren't found and there was always these rumors it was the white feral people who had taken them um but also there was where was this kid okay so in 2019 there was a young boy i think he was like 12 or 13 casey hathaway he they had gone on some sort of like camp or trip to go hike part of the appalachian trail and he went off the trail somehow. And and that's the thing, too, is, like, this idea that, like, the white feral people are always trying to get you off the trail. Okay. So, you know, that's why, like, you'll hear your name called. Like, the you know, voices. Yeah, you you'll hear, hear someone voices. similar to you. Right. You'll be like, oh, who's that? You know, I didn't know they were here or, you know, whatever it is. They're always trying to get you off the path. But if you hear and, your name called, you're going to go towards it. Right. And, you know, especially the younger kid, you know, if they're younger, whatever, you know, so a lot of people go off these paths and, you know, unfortunately never come back. But this kid, this Casey Hathaway, he had been missing, I think it was almost like two days. And when they finally found him and rescued him, they were like, how, you know, how did you survive out here? You know, what have you been doing? And they're like, oh, there was this big tall man that looks like a bear. And that's the other idea too, is there's also, half this half man half wolf that's also in the forest like too. a dog man that's yes. a common one through yes. like yeah through a lot of folklore i think we've talked about that on an earlier yeah episode there's dog men in like michigan wisconsin yeah that sort yeah of yeah thing. yeah that's a that's a common one um but he made it seem like this man this you know whatever supernatural entity Took, took care of him and he was like he watched out for me he gave me food he you know gave me a place to stay you know under in his cave or whatever so and that's a true story so and they never really knew obviously what ended up happening because did they go kid. look for the guy at they all? did of course they've oh you know they've always been looking for and there are also of course stories about you know how like the the 
any of the rangers on the Appalachian Trail, any police, nearby cops, like they all know about these people. So that's the other thing too. Like if you know any, like somehow know any like, like cops a sheriff or, or, a county yeah, sheriff or, or a, any of the rangers the or park anything. park rangers would be very interesting. Yeah, just how, because of course everything's blown up, you know, and exaggerated. So it's like how much, are these really things that like rangers talk about or, you know, is it just all folklore? Um, but yeah, just like spooky stuff. And it is, I mean, there's so many videos and stories that go viral on social media and Reddit and TikTok and everywhere of just the amount of supernatural stuff that does happen in this area. And, you know, again, a lot of people talk about how, because it is so old, of course, because there is so much mining and, you know, people exploring the caves and there is so much caves and mountains where people could hide or things could happen or energy is stored and, you know, it can cause a lot of supernatural. It just sounds like it's a lot of that whole unknown, right? Right. Anytime if you watch Jaws when you were a kid and you went in the ocean, you always have that little extra fear. Yep. Right? Yeah. But then stories around any around mountain ranges have a lot of these types of, of stories and they're all yeah. a little different, but it is interesting because it goes in themes with things you've talked about before. You love your rocks and your crystals and all that stuff. Yep. Well, think of the amount of rocks and crystals that could the well, in theory hold energy and totally hold on totally. to some of that stuff. Totally. And also for if, if some of it is white feral people or any story along that line, what better place for people to hide? Because all right. The, right. And even when you live in those areas, you can't see as much around you. There's only a, because there's so right. many hills, you can only it's see tough to get around. a well, small that's, area. Yeah. yeah. And they talked a lot about that, too. Like when, you know, the, the British first started coming over, a lot of people didn't even want to go and explore those. No. Mountains. It was like way too much. Of a it's tough to, like it's tough to grow food. Yep. It's tough. Like you're cut off from a lot of things. And you yep. talk about the hard times that people have had there. Well, it's because there might only be mining. It, it's not an easy right. place. There's to not a lot of farming. They live. said it's yeah. not a lot of, you know, the logging industry was huge and then that died. So there's just a lot of like failed industries and um, yeah, just a lot of heartache that's gone on in that area. So. And with a lot of heartache could come some negative energy could right. come. Right. Some of those types of things that yep. uh, you love to investigate. Exactly. A lot of spooky stuff. What was your favorite thing that you've read so far about? Well, I think, you know, again, it is just, I love the idea of folklore and how stories get passed down and how they originated and where, you know, how, where the, you know, there's always like some sort of truth to something, whether it's a truth about someone that had an experience about you know, an experience that was then spread. Um, But I think just the history and like you were just saying too, just the unknown, the unknown of there's so much area and so much like, you know, nooks and crannies and places that we haven't been able to explore in that area just because it's so big. And especially with the caves. And I mean, like there was one guy who was like trying to bust he his name too. There's one guy who goes in a lot on the folklore of this area. It's called Lore Lodge. Is his YouTube L O R E Lodge L O D G E, and he was like trying to debunk it. He's like, could someone actually? Could people actually live there? And he's like, I mean, technically, if the group was big enough, like over a hundred people, it have you know, if the certain amount of people. You know, it is such a big area and it's not like people, people are really going around all the time exploring these caves often. So he's like, it really, you know, it could be possible. It's not impossible that there is like a group of people that no are living off the grid. And in- oh, there's plenty of people living off the grid in that area. Yeah. Well, the right. question is how right tied into have how- they been doing this? Have they really been doing it since the 1300s? <gasps> right. Is this really much yeah, different the group than somebody of Native America, yeah. the Nahas that went and yeah. yeah, hid away. So, yeah, but it's just really interesting. I, you know, it's, I've always been interested just because of the amount of supernatural stuff and the amount of people that talk about it. I mean, it's just also too, like kind of the lore 
of oh it's just one of the most haunted mountain ranges in the world just because it is so old and it's made up of so many different parts of the world just because it was connected to Pangea at one point um so i don't know it's just it's intriguing nonetheless what do you have to add james i think that the biggest thing is do you think it's more interesting all the all the rules seem to be around the supernatural side of it. It is mostly. But then there's like the white feral people, which could be actually be real people and not. So where do you think that the. Well, so the whole thing too, and you know, this is also a huge piece that I probably should have mentioned was that the Nahas were also cannibals. Okay. So it's the idea that, you know, creepiness around people that eat other people. Yeah. You know, so it's this group of people that also practice cannibalism. And, you know, it's this whole idea of where are they getting these other people? Are they going out and taking these people from the Appalachian Trail, making it seem like, oh, they just left off the trail, you know? Um, yeah, very like kind of hills have eyes where they're hiding in the cave, yep. you know, at night or during the day. And then at night they come out and take people and eat them and whatever they do with them so yeah so there it's that's that's probably again like one of the biggest folklore it's why i kind of started there is with the white feral people again i just love we are white feral people i feel like we are the white feral. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um but that's just like a huge rumor and you know again if someone goes missing or if you know there is an issue a lot of people are like oh is that the white feral people who took them but again like i mentioned there's like 15 20 different folklore stories you know there's apparently this you know, the campus cat the you know again these tr this people i call the tree men too apparently like, like talk through the trees like they communicate by knocking on the trees so that's another room folklore too if you hear knocking it's the tree people trying to talk to each other. The dog man, you know, Bigfoot. There's just so many. Like, again, we could do like a whole episode just on all the whatever. I think the things surrounding the rules are the interesting part to me. Like, totally. Where did the, the, again, many rules over many years, right? Yep. But where did these come from? How did those rules originate? Right. The idea of those seemed to be the most interesting. Yeah, I think that that's something that's because they all come from a story somewhere. And they're all very specific, and then they get repeated enough, right? So enough of those things happen that yeah, then all people of a sudden, just keep passing yeah, along. they get repeated over and over and over again. Right. So why did those rules? And what we'll never know is what rules were maybe around, but now they aren't anymore. Yeah, meaning who knows? that those aren't those those aren't important. Those weren't valid reasons to have rules to keep talking about yeah but just like the common well, one that's you a said, lot of rules the one you said about keeping the shades shut mm -hmm. right and not going towards your name like the, some of the specificity of all those is very interesting as to why why those again well, the eyes or the the dark entities trying to invite you in you could try and explain it very simple is one the word that a human hears at the lowest decibel level is their name like if you were to identify a word yeah. it would be sam and like if i said sam as quiet as possible and for you to still be able to I'd, i could say sam maybe for you cat as well but there's like your name is the word something that you can hear better than anything and yeah. you actually sometimes will think you hear your name when you didn't hear your right, name, right right yeah so again i'd love to know why is the name thing like some of those do tie into uh, our psychology in general yeah like but where what story was it that that person got called over by their name right right and then the guy with the mushroom soup and the i know was yeah. he just on mushrooms well it's the thing like did he get poisoned you know did he have some underlying did he mental drink, hit, health did he drink issues the wrong water? did he get right like you know was it something he ate or drank you know it's a lot of the stuff too we'll just never know you know because it's kind of vague stories and were these written up in a newspaper somewhere who knows but it's just kind of it just is spooky and we're getting close to spooky season you guys so 
get ready for some spooky stuff. I'm kind of like saving, trying to save like some good spooky topics for. Especially once you get into September, because you know October's right around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really do start tying up. spooky stuff. True. Lots of spooky stuff. You um, want to know a fact about the Appalachian Trail? Yes. The Appalachian Mountains are older than the rings of Saturn. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, and I was reading too, like, just because these mountains, like the top of the mountains too, like, if you look at the the mountain ranges, like you can almost look at like a period, like a pyramid of diversity, like the bottom of a mountain in these ranges is so different from the top of the mountain. Like they almost like call them like islands of diversity. Cause like these top of these mountains had been, you know, just like completely different than anything you've ever seen. Like when you get to the top of these mountains and Oof. the diversity of species that you can find oh, in this absolutely. area just because it's so old there's and there's only certain species that survive in a certain region of an area for certain reasons right yeah in the same tree you can find the same type of bird but they've developed different beak structure right over millions of years partly because it is so darn old yeah. right so w- when you talked about pangea let's remind people what pangea was right, right? that's uh that was a time when all of what we now know as the seven major continents you learn about in school was one. All of the continents were together. Now there's other continents that have fallen off and we will skip all over all that, but they were one. The Appalachian mountains were probably forming sometime as Pangea was starting to come together. Yeah. Right. But yep. then the Appalachian mountains were almost the, the, first part was the northern part of the Appalachian Mountains, the up in Canada, yeah, yeah, New yeah. England, right? Yeah. This, these are the older parts of the Appalachian Mountains. There was a time that after Pangea started to split apart. So, well, we're kind of South Africa is, South, uh, South America is connected to Africa, as you know, you can kind of see yeah, where yeah, those yeah. two would be together. And Canada would be over the top of Africa and the United States, the eastern part of the United States was on that side, right? Once it started pulling apart, the Appalachian Mountains actually planed out, right? There were still some rock formations there, but because everything was being stretched a little bit more. Yeah, and I think that's why they say it's islands of diversity because at one point, like, it was, like, they were, like, you can almost, like, feel like you're in, like, 1300s up on top of the mountain because that's it, everything was kind of pushed up. So, like, that- and that's how when the tectonic plates pushed together, that's what happened. So when it got stretched back out, Parts of the Appalachian went down, right? But there's still parts of the Appalachian that they know that there's some of the older rock formations that they found. Yeah. I still think the oldest rock formations are, I think, are in Australia still, um, technically. And then northern Canada, actually, probably outside of the Appalachian Range or where yeah. the northern, northern, northern part of Canada, closer to the Arctic Circle. But they are. it is one of the, still the oldest ranges, and that's why they're lower than the Rocky Mountains. That's why the Rocky Mountains are taller because they're younger. They haven't yeah. been wore down as much by time. Oh, yeah. the Appalachian Mountains are also older than the ozone layer. Whoa. Before, like, Yeah, so large... it's like something that old, like, I don't know, creepy shit's going on in there. That's, and that's part of it, is it is, that's how. And so much diversity. From... And it's been through so much. Yeah. Just, yeah. just the, stru- the ground, the, the minerals themselves, right? That entire region went through an entire shifting of all the continents, oceans. It's been through multiple, multiple, uh, pro- what, probably three of the five. I should have looked this up. Ice ages? No. Well, ice ages, th- th- been through a couple of those, but it's been through three of the five, uh, glo- what they call the global killers. Yeah. Like the most recent was one was when the dinosaurs were wiped out. <gasps> when they, uh, when a, meteor hit just off the yucatan peninsula right but then there's been wait maybe there was one after that that's probably been through three of the five global killers like wow. super so volcanoes it's a survivor going it's not gonna give up it's not gonna stop uh, it's gonna work harder the white pharaoh people is that their theme is that yeah, it's the white pharaoh song? people's song got it <laughs> <laughs> but then also that whole region, just the tragedy from the settlers coming over, the tragedy that people have been <gasps> right. through in the Blue Mountains. So like, much death in that area, too. Part of that. Yeah. All, you know, there were also, I'd have to look this up. Don't quote me on it. 
but the Vikings were in that part of Canada way before Columbus ever came over. Yeah. So what, what was some of the lore and that none of it was written, but Vikings were pillagers. What did the Vikings do when they came in? Cause those mountains were on ancient yeah. Viking maps that they found. Yeah. Yeah. So they knew those were there and seeing those mountains is how, if at the time you were crossing the Atlantic for the first time ever, you're going to see those mountains before you see actual land, right, right, like the land yeah. you're going to land on. Right. So there's some history there with that as well. That part I didn't find I have time to find a whole lot on, but very interesting. It's all very interesting. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Let us know. Comment below. Send us in a voice note. Um, or you can interact on the tool too if you're on Spotify, I believe, or Apple Podcasts. I think you can too. Um, but let us know if, if there are any other stories that you've heard, spooky stories or folklore that I missed. That's important. Call us in. Let us know. Um, I just love like spooky stuff and like supernatural stuff. Like, wouldn't it be cool if there was a world where, like, there were half man, half dogs in the world, in the woods? Like, kind of love that. Well, according to some theories in physics, that is something that's po very possible. <gasps> so they're out there. The dog men. Bye, James. I'm trying to find a dog man. <laughs> Not surprising. <laughs> um, No, that's just... It's just cool. It's just cool to think about. I just love that kind of stuff. So I think I love all the like those fairy books and stuff too, that it's like, you know, or like why people love like the Harry Potter where there is a world where there's a little bit of magic. Maybe it's not just so straightforward. Anyways, let us know what you guys think. Call us in. Cause now it's that time. That's right. It's time for secrets, weird secrets, where you call us in, tell us something weird that's happened to you, something weird you've done, something you haven't told anybody else that you've done before. We always throw out random stuff too, um, little prompts for you, but always anonymous. If you want to call in, leave this weird secret, you can call in too. That's speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod. It'll also be in the description. And it's also in our Instagram bio if you're not following. Um, but and of course, this week's prompt would be if you have anything about the Appalachian Trail, if you know anything that we missed or have any stories, personal experiences. Spooky mountain stories in general are accepted. Spooky mountain stories. Um, all right, James, are you ready? for the first voicemail prepared here we go so i'm in the army and a million years ago when i first went to training we all the females had to go to what they call in the military a well woman visit and um so they put all the females on a bus and we went to the clinic and we had to go stand in a hallway basically and we each went in one at a time to go in and have our female exam done and as if that wasn't traumatic enough um the person who was performing the exams was an older gentleman which is fine i'm sure he was great at his job but um i noticed when i went in there that he only had three fingers and so when he put the glove on that he was going to then use to do an internal exam of uh, my body he had the three fingers filled in the glove and then the other two were just kind of like flopping around so a little bit of a traumatic gynecological experience this would have tra like traumatized me i am unable to comment, comment on this one i'm curious which fingers it was that he was missing because like you know like <laughs> i just I, that would, I would have had to say. Are I we think, talking about like a two in the pink, one in the stink situation? No, 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 because he doesn't, well, you know, they just, they stick normally two up your, up yep. your hole, up your I was, gape. That was my next question. Look, I've never had one of those done. How many fingers does he really need? So normally, well, that's the thing, but it's like, what fingers are missing? Like, yeah, he's sticking like his thumb and his pinky, you know, like which fingers? That would be a little difficult. Um, Take my strong hand. Yeah, that's what I was just Take my strong hand. Take my strong hand. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Um, that would just, that would have traumatized me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I guess, what do you say? Like, I'm sorry, you need more, I need more fingers in there? 
you know? Yeah, can't excuse, like, you, get some can't you request fingers? someone else? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that would honestly send me into orbit. But at least you were cool about it. And hopefully, you know, and I'm sure he was a great doctor. Not to say that he's not a great doctor because of it. But there is something about that that rubs me the wrong way if you know what i'm saying good one luckily i have not i will say i've have not had like two of a horrible experience going to the you typically go to women though that's why i always go to women but i have had on a woman and this is always the worst a student like a male student that was with them yeah observing yep and it's like no no you can't come in you, I've said no. You stay outside. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know. Like, watch porn. Like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, use your imagination. For what it looks use like. your imagination, Doc. What is this? OnlyFans? Like, you know, like, I don't know. Something about like a 20 year old coming in and like watching it. I'm like, I don't know. This guy's up to no good. This guy's up to no good. <laughs> it feels, something feels weird. The about poor guy this. just wants to be a doctor. Well, the, it, first of all, it's weird too. Like, why do you want to be a gynecologist? Something's weird about that. And I know and he wants to deliver babies. Okay, then just be an obstetrics person. Yeah, you don't have to be the GN. You right. Could just be you could just be the OB. OB. Yeah. Okay. So get out of my badge, sir. Um, anyways, if you let us know if there's any other traumatic experiences. I mean, nothing like too traumatic, you know, but um those always crack me up. Oh, and also getting an IUD. That was traumatic. Just because that just sounds uncomfortable. It was just horrible and the worst pain in my life. Um, okay, are you ready for the next one, Joms? Here we go. Hello, Sam and James. First of all, I love you guys so much. The fact that Sam replies to us as fans is magnificent. Thank you so much. Um But I will say I was listening to this week's podcast about the haunted places or like the portals to hell. I'm from Tucson, Arizona. I currently live in Tennessee now. And in Tucson, we have an Indian reservation. And on that Indian reservation, there's a place called the San Javier Church. Um, It might be called more than that, but that's how I know it. And in there, we, growing up, we always talked about that there was a portal to hell in the San Javier Mission Church. Um, So I just thought I'd let you know that um, we've been there. We've seen the little door that supposedly has the portal to hell and everything. I don't really know much about it other than the horror stories I've heard. Um which have basically just been that they've seen or heard stuff or, you know, you know, the shebang. But, um, yeah, thanks. I love you guys so much. Keep doing what you're doing because you light up my week every week. I love you guys. I love you. That you guys are so, so sweet. so sweet and genuine, too. Yes, yeah, so genuine. And also, I will say, too, I, of course, I, oh, I think, she, obviously, she was maybe talking about <clears throat> DMs and me trying to get back to DMs. I really do try as many as I can and not to sound arrogant and annoying, but like I could be in my direct messages all day. True. I've seen it. Don't like, feel bad if she can't get back so to you. It's I, difficult. I kind of pick and choose. It really is random. Like it just, if something catches my eye or depends what time I'm checking my phone, like you, it just is, could be lucky that I go to check my DMS and you would just message me a minute before. And so that's just one of the next to the top. Like, there's no real rhyme or reason to it. I'm not ignoring some people, but I truly do. I love chatting with you guys. Like if I could spend all day just chatting with you guys, I would, but um, I do try to get back as many as I can. But if I don't like it, there's nothing against you. I just like, it would be impossible. Um, but I do try as much as I can. Um, or and so I love you guys. I appreciate DM the weird and proud. Pod. Oh yeah. And if you DM the weird and proud pod, I, I won't, if you get to it the, right I'll right away to the, i'll bet you could if they commented on the youtube <gasps> oh i always look at the youtube comments if you commented for on YouTube, sure that's like that's how you get to the front of the line that's how you get to the front line um but the weird and proud pod i definitely i check those not as often not every day but um i always check those if you have something important uh but yeah that is a creepy voicemail anyway sorry to get your voicemail 
I did like do a light Google search and there is, it says that the entrance to hell is in this church in Tucson, Arizona. I'm doing Arizona. research on it right now. Are you? Yeah, I'm all over it. And it was funny, even to just like Google searching, just like portals to hell. It is so funny how many places say that they do have a portal to hell though. It's like commonplace, like portals to hell are everywhere. Turns out you can go to hell anytime you want. There's a lot of them. If you ever want to go. Um, yeah, I reading about this place very much reminds me of the, the a movie that I like that I think people should watch. I think it's just called a weird watch, but it's called The Pope's Exorcist. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. I've told yeah, you yeah, how yeah, much yeah, I yeah. like that one. Yeah, yeah, This yeah. reminds me of that. Just a weird watch. Pope's Exorcist. If you haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm interested I, doing more research to it. If it's like what the significance is behind that, how they discovered that, but maybe we just do like another like episode of just like portals to hell around the world. I mean, there's two, so many of them two, Are we, are we bold enough to go with like religious stories? Yeah. Well, that's the thing is obviously a lot of, touchy, of it is religion, yeah. but it's very, yeah. We could do it tastefully. We need to go to Arizona too, by the way. That's I, I would go to list. Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. Not right now. It's a little too warm for me. But um, I would love. I um had a friend back in like college that had lived out there, a family out there, and I loved going out there. That's another spooky place. I feel like yeah. everywhere spooky in my well, mind. Arizona has a lot of like the Wild West, stories right? Too. Right, a lot of ghost towns, and you know I love a ghost town. Um, so maybe we'll have to come out and check it out for ourselves. But I love a good portal to hell story. So thank you for calling in. Thank you for all the love. We love you so much. That was a great call. Um, all right, James, are you ready for the next one? Prepared. Here we go. Hey, Sam and James. First time, short time, new listener here. I found you, Sam, on my TikTok wearing your tiny jorts. And I'm in love with you guys, obsessed. And now I'm watching your podcast on YouTube. Um, so something weird I did on mushrooms. I'm going to tell you two weird things. Number one, I think this is the very first time I ever tripped. Uh, me and my friend, we each took an eighth. And we went to the movies. And we saw that movie Stuck on You with Matt Damon. I forget the other guy. But they're like stuck together. The conjoined twins. That is not a good movie to see when you are 16 years old and on mushrooms the first time. Would not recommend. Um, or maybe I do recommend it. And that's going to be really weird. Um, and number two... One time we were at my best friend's house. There was like four of us. And, you know, we just kind of – I got antsy. I just like to be outside when we do that. And we were stuck inside. So we decided to take a trip up to 7-Eleven. Um, there was a crazy thunder and lightning storm. We got locked in the 7-Eleven because the power went out for about half an hour. I remember playing with like a doodle pad. Um, you know the one? you It's like a gray red pen. You guys are like old. You get it. Um, and then some lady drove us home in her Honda Element. She's like, why are all these cars here? Nobody could pick you up. <laughs> well, ma'am. Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs> so much of that cracked me up. Um, first of all, you guys know, if you've been to a show, I've talked about it on here before. I had my last mushroom experience was a traumatic one. And but I used to love we sh like there should be a time when I can open myself back up to them again because there was a time I used to love the little nighttime sit by the fire be in nature, um, but I I just can't imagine like going and being out in public on mushrooms. That is the one thing that like mushrooms. And being in public, you know, like being in nature for sure. Like, and maybe if there are people around, fine. But like going to like a Seven Eleven or like even like a movie theater would stress me out. And anytime I've partaken in anything like that, you know, more my more cup of tea is having some having some beverageinos. That's yep. my favorite thing. Yeah. But yeah, anything outside of beverageinos, I don't like going into public at all. Right. Like right. And I, 
There's yeah. too much unknown. There's way too much unknown. And getting locked in a 7-Eleven, I think I would have actually lost my mind. I think I would have had to call 911. I would have broken through a window. You would have freaked out a little bit. I would have, especially with the, like, I, I just, I'd gone too crazy. You guys, last time I did mushrooms, I took eight grams, which did is you insane. Ever, did you ever see the movie Stuck on You? I don't know if I did. I know what movie you're talking about, but so I don't know if I ever saw It's a Fairly it. Brothers movie. The same guys that wrote Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. It's, and I'm, I am, I'm not going to look it up, but I'm racking my brain to think of who Matt Damon was conjoined with. I can't think of this off the um, head. I don't it know. was not one of their best movies. It was obviously super controversial, but they right, were right, always, right. those two were always about pushing the limit yeah, so yeah, much, yeah, totally. but it, it still just wasn't as funny as nearly as funny as yeah. some of the other ones. But yeah, now I'll have to blurt it out later. Yeah. Now I want to do mushrooms again. I feel like I'm ready. I feel like it's been some time. It's been like over a year or so. And I feel like now I'm ready because I do. I feel like in the summer, sitting outside, watching the fire, what you know, watching the sky. That's the way to do it, and not take eight grams. Um, but that's a gorgeous story. I'm glad that you're safe and you didn't have a freak out like I would have. But I love a mushroom story. Call us in if you have any weird mushroom stories. Tell us weird anytime. mushroom stories in the Appalachian Mountain range. Oh my God! Can you imagine taking mushrooms in the Appalachian Mountain? <gasps> Wait. You guys. And if you read through all the rules while you're while on While you're on you're mushrooms, tripping on mushrooms in the Appalachian Mountains. Probably <gasps> not a smart combo. Holy shit. Gotta do it. Um, all right. That was a gorgeous voicemail. Thank you so much. All right, we're gonna do one more just because um I know we're running a little over time, but we'll do one more that was also cracking me up. It was random and perfect. Here we go. Hey guys, loving the podcast. Um, so my story is set in Ibiza. My husband and I love going to Ibiza. We go to the north of the island where it's really chill. Uh, and this one time that we went, um, my husband realized that he'd lost his phone and the phone had like our boarding passes on it and everything that we kind of needed to get home. And me being the genius that I am, I had put find my phone on the iPad that we'd taken with us. And we discovered that the phone was on the other side of the island, somewhere that we'd never been, like had never ever been to that part of the island. So we got in the car and we drove to the other side of the island. And I'm like, oh my God, what if we like knock on the door and they're like some ruffians or something? What, what are we What are we doing? Why don't we just leave it? But we were on this like Bonnie and Clyde adventure. So we were like, let's just do this. And we found ourselves in this really, really rural, very, very Spanish bar and we were phoning the phone. I was phoning the phone and it was ringing, but this guy was just ignoring us. He was just trying to like ignore that we were kind of like going around him like sharks. Anyway, we ended up having to follow him outside the bar and he smashed the phone and tried to hide it behind the dumpster. And I found it and I almost started a fight with this guy, even though he was like, mi amigo, mi amigo. I'm like, no, no, no amigo. Thank you very much. Anyway, we got the phone completely smashed. We left the guy. We got to the airport and managed to get the. Uh... Okay, it ended, but obviously, I'm hoping you got your passports and your or your. Sounds like everything's fine. Yeah, but can you imagine? First of all, I cannot believe that you just went after your phone. I'm focused on her calling people ruffians. Yeah, I love your accent. Ruff- yes. Out about to go to the other side of the island and hoping there were no ruffians. That actually wasn't bad. Right? I'm getting better. Um, yeah, your accent's amazing. Everything about the way you told that story was amazing. But I cannot believe I'm you got some balls. Go over just to some random bar in a weird part of town you've never been. Looking for your phone. That's that takes guts. I like it. I like it. Um, but it seems that you did smash up your phone. Like, I mean, I'm sure you pro- there's probably no way to, like, to try and like get him to pay for what it. What were something. they? No, there's no way. What were they going to do with the Well, phone? that's what I was it's like. What's the point? Like, was he trying to sell it and maybe I mean, make money off of it? Or You got to think know. if you can make 50 euro, 50 euro down there, because we've been to southern Spain. 50 euro <sighs> right. goes a long way. Yeah, well... Who knows? I don't know, but that is crazy. You're wild. Abitha. Abitha. One day we'll get the I wouldn't know how to say that the right way. One day we'll get the word Abitha. The ruffians were still. Ruffians. Classic. But I just, I can't imagine. But also, like, if it was my phone, like, maybe I would have. You know, like, I say that until it was my phone. I'd be like. And you know I'd go with you. 
That yeah. wouldn't bug me. Yeah, that would kind of would have been good content, you know? Would have been good content. People love when my life is in danger. My content, my engagement is never higher than when I'm close to death. <laughs> this does not bode well for our future vacations. Anytime I'm about safety. to die, people love it. I prefer safety. I don't like heights. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. Exactly. No, I was, I was just so funny. Cracks me up. But, you know, the excitement is high. I can see why, you know, nothing like a near death experience. Well, guys, long episode today. Um, so call us in if you guys also have a weird story, especially any Appalachia. Lapalachia, let us know any weird stories travel weird any spooky stuff i want to get the spooky stuff ramped up spooky stories call us in at speakpipe that's speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod again speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod call us in always anonymous it's so easy it takes two seconds well, not too sad. You know, it depends on how long you return. You know what I mean? Um, also, make sure you are following us on Instagram, Weird and Proud Pod. Also, if you are watching this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. Make sure the little bell button is on so you know when a new episode drops. Um, and we just love you guys so much. We appreciate all the support. We love, 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 love getting to giggle and talk about weird stuff with you. So thank you so much for listening. James, anything else you want to say to the people? No. Nah. All right. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Love you, weirdlings. Love ya. Bye.